Good evening, Prime Minister, and welcome to the program. Thanks, Tara. What a day. Well, every day is a challenge, particularly when you're dealing with a global pandemic on coronavirus, and there's a, an understandable high level of anxiety in the community, and we've lost Australians. Uh, there are so many more around the world who've lost their lives, and we're dealing with one of the most serious situations this country has seen, certainly since the Second World War. New South Wales and Victoria, as well as the other states, are talking about going tougher. Their message, quite clearly, is that you're not doing enough on stopping the spread of the infection. Is no, that that's the not case? their view at all. I mean, we've been working closely together on this, and we have been working with them for them to take additional measures within their states uh, to deal specifically with outbreak areas that are occurring within their states. I mean, every state has got a very different experience so far, but we've all been working together very, very well. At the end of the day, States have to decide um, the extent of, of measures that they take within their own states to, to prevent the further outbreak. Well, New South Wales and Victoria are talking about closing schools as of Tuesday. Why is that not being spoken about at a national level? It has been spoken at well, a national level. Well, why is the level. decision not being made to do that? Well, it was only a few days ago where all states were resolute on the point in relation to keeping schools open. And it's important that schools remain open, particularly for those parents with, who are working in, in critical areas, particularly in the health workforce. But this has been an active issue which we've flagged uh, maybe at a point in time where, where states would have to take that decision. They're just seeking to try and take that decision together, collectively, about how they might approach it. But ultimately, again, states run the school system and they'll make their own decisions on how they do that. So the Commonwealth the, doesn't run the school system. If the medical advice is that it's unnecessary to close schools, why is New South Wales and Victoria looking at closing schools as of Tuesday? Ultimately, states will make their own decisions about these things. We're a, we're a federation. The Commonwealth doesn't make their decisions for them. They'll make their own decisions, but it's important when they do that they are very mindful of the impacts and consequences, and particularly for their own well, health workforce, which they will need in their hospitals. Do you think it's the right decision? Well, I, I will only act always on the medical advice that we're provided. And, uh, and you're, the being, you're telling me the medical advice is that you don't need to close schools? The medical advice is updated on a daily basis. The medical advice is being considered even as we're sitting here in the middle of this interview. And this is a fast-moving issue, and as the medical advice changes, then, of course, that's when governments will, will make different decisions. And so, just for clarity, has the medical advice shifted? Well, not as we're sitting here in this room at this minute, but there's a meeting going on as we speak. You understand my confusion, though? No, you know, you've, you've I, got, I, We've I, got states saying we're going to close schools. You're saying there's no medical advice to say you have to do that. I'm asking, well, why are they doing it? You're saying, well, they, they've got to make up that their mind because well, advice well, is shifting sovereign governments all the time. and they, they have to consider all the issues that are before them. But what I'm telling you is that the medical advice, the same medical advice that had a unanimity of view amongst all the premiers and all the chief ministers who were very adamant about having a consistent position on this, um, that medical advice is still the same advice before the government. I think we need to understand, Tara, that this issue is moving extremely fast. And what we have always said is as the information changes, as there is a need to take additional measures, particularly locally and within states, then I would expect states to take those actions, and that's exactly what I've been saying and forecasting now for many days. Is there conflicting advice? No, I have not seen conflicting advice coming forward to the National Cabinet. No, I haven't. OK. We are in unprecedented times. Is it not time now for the federal government to take over, a unity government, to make federal decisions for clarity and for the, the safety of our community? Is it not time for the federal government to make these decisions? Well, the national cabinet that has been formed, this is the first time this has ever happened in Australia's federal history. This is the closest this country has ever had to exactly what you're talking about. The constitution of the Commonwealth, of, the, of all of our governments, does not provide for what you're asking for. That is not an option that is available to the Commonwealth government. But what is available is us working together in the way we are. That's why I pulled the National Cabinet together. Now, I have no doubt that on some occasions there will be some issues where states will go their own way and they will take different decisions, and that will be up to them. But there is still a lot of work to do. The issue that you're raising is one that the Constitution never envisaged or does not give me the powers to address, but that's why I pulled together the National Cabinet to get as close to that as we possibly can. I mean, that is an option, has been an option at times of war. Are we not in a war at the moment? Well, what we are doing right now is no different to what was done in those times. They had no greater authorities on these issues than, than we have today. And in fact, in many ways, we've gone beyond it. 
I mean, at the time of war, there was not a government that pulled together in the cabinet all the premiers and all the chief ministers together with the prime minister. And it's been a very collaborative and constructive process. But at the same time, we need to recognise that states are responsible for what happens in their states. I'll support them and will provide the advice. And importantly, that includes whether it's the assistance from the Defence Forces, as they're already supporting, or indeed what I've announced today, some $66 billion of, of measures to support people if they lose their job or they lose their business. I mean, this is many, many times over the packages that have been announced at state level, and that's providing the stronger and more secure safety net for people who will find themselves the first in the firing line, in the blows of this exchange that you will see uh, of the coronavirus and its economic impact. So would it be fair to describe this not as a stimulus package but as a welfare package? Well, we described it as a safety net package today. Yeah, it's not, we're not talking about growth, are we? We're just talking about survival. Well, the economy is going, to have, is going to be significantly battered by this in a way that we have not seen. Uh, in my lifetime. In terms of the numbers uh, that we're talking about, we're, no, we're now talking over a thousand infections in Australia. True. What do you believe the ultimate number will be? Nobody knows. Really? Correct. Uh, what, what sort of advice are you getting on that though? That, that advice that nobody knows. See, I know people are looking for a lot of certainty on these things. From you. <laughs> well, and that certainty at present, because this is unprecedented what we're seeing on a global scale. What we can provide certainty of is if, if someone finds himself in a position where they've lost their job, I've doubled the job seeker allowance. If a business is wondering how they're going to get from now to the end of this virus crisis, which at the very least we think is six months, that's why we've provided up to $100,000 in grants to help them get there. That's why we've ensured that people can break open and access their own superannuation savings, up to 20000 if their income has fallen by, by 20%. Uh, these things are designed to help if you're a self-funded retiree that you aren't forced to pull money out in the, in the middle of a bad market uh, by changing the drawdown rates. I can guarantee people the things that I can do to help them. What I can't do is forecast what is an unforecastable situation. In a two-week period in Italy, they went from 1,000 infections mm. to 16,000 in a fortnight, 1,000 mm. to 16,000. Could that happen here? Well, the situation in Italy and Australia is very different for a couple of reasons. Our health system is different. Um, the age of our population is very different. And the way life is lived is also very different. Um, on top of that, our rate of testing is one of the highest in the world. We've got 127,000 tests that have been done for a rate of infection, as you say, just over 1,200. The, the percentage of negative cases, 99%. That's one, of, that's one of the highest, if not the highest, in the world. But this is going to be really tough. I mean, these things are going to break our hearts, but it's not going to break our spirit. Are you frightened? It's not my job to do that. Are you it's overwhelmed? It's my job to be... Not at all. Look, in situations like this, you've just got to act on the information, make decisions and communicate clearly. I can't control what I can't control, but I can control what our government does. And I can control what support and information and health services that we can deliver at a time of real great crisis. I know you say you, your job is to communicate clearly. Mm. You tell people not to hoard, they continue to do so. You tell people not to socialise, look at Bondi. Mm. I mean, they're not listening, are they? Well, no, I actually think the experience is different to that. I mean, I know that from even just this week, the figures that were provided to me by the supermarkets has showed that there was greater order today than there was a number of days ago. But that will change depending on how people respond to the measures that come. What we saw at Bondi Beach was just not OK. It was not even remotely OK. And that sent a message to the premiers it's an immensity to the Chief Ministers and I that not enough Australians are taking this seriously. I said today, we are in a war against this virus and all Australians are enlisted to do the right thing. We can give instruction, we can enforce them. People are told to self-isolate for 14 days when they come back. People are told to keep the one and a half, one and a half metres distance. Venues are told to only have a, an average of four square metres for the number of people. This needs to be observed. If it's not observed, then very draconian measures will have to be introduced that might otherwise have been unnecessary. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks a lot, Tara. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.